Rush. do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, episode 17. This is a very special episode because mm-hmm. we have our great friend and guest, Chris Bonghead. Yo. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. The first thing I always like to ask all of our guests is, have you listened to our podcast before? Uh, I have, actually. I listened to the first episode you Wait, guys did. Really? You have? Um, That's a first. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly uh, contacted me. Oh, like a quick, sorry. Quick th- you got to keep the mic uh, <laughs> one inch away. Okay, sorry. Inch away. I know it's fucking... All right. right. You're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, Kelly contacted me like a couple weeks ago and then told me about it, so I, I did a little research. Yeah. Sure. I watched the first one you did, or I listened to the first one you did, and then I watched the one that you guys had Cameron on uh, yeah. recently. Was it the pilot? I Where it was just me and Bill? It was no, maybe it wasn't that one then. I watched the one there was a musician on. You had a musician on. Musician. Did he have musician. blonde hair? I couldn't see it. I was oh. listening to mm. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, Zach probably then. Right? Sandry? Sandry would be yeah. my guess. Yeah. I don't know. Who can say? We've yeah. had so many reputable We're esteemed pumped, guests. Because nobody's ever done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th- yeah, I think you asked Cameron and he was like, I I know of it. Yeah. And then <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I did a little bit of research ahead of time. So I trust you've told all your friends and family about how awesome this podcast <laughs> is and <laughs> and you're spreading the good news of hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. I've told people I've told some comics. But I don't really. Yeah, my family doesn't really care that I'm doing that. Oh, <laughs> apparently, say nothing's family really cared because he didn't want his last name mentioned, and I mentioned it right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, like the very first line in the first. Write him out. <laughs> yeah, that that was his first words. Dude, I told out. you, like one thing: don't say my fucking name. And what's the literally the very first thing that Phil did? Yeah. Anyway, Chris, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to Thank have you. you here. Thank you for listening. Uh, We've got questions for you. Sure. Yeah. Let's start off with uh, what is your social security number? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I almost said it just because I like telling. <laughs> I, I, just, <laughs> yeah. I like being nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if someone asks me a question, I like. I don't. I don't like having secrets. All right. No, no. It's it's a. You're you're avoiding the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do instead of lying. Quit beating around the bush, Chris. It's, What's your social security it's number? A number of digits. Arranged in an order. <laughs> I don't. What did Cameron say? Something very say. similar to that, actually. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. it's a number. It's a series of numbers. Um, it's five, ten. Does you know, you know, like when the little rascals try to take out a loan. <laughs> seven. Do uh, does anyone ever answer that question? Would you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, this is only the second time we've asked it. So oh, yeah. Okay, so you try. So that. we're batting zero for two right now. But that's, that's really funny. That's all right. Uh, what can you tell us about yourself? Like, what is? What is Chris? What is Chris? Who is Chris? Chris Why is Chris? Is uh five foot five and scared of everything. Yeah. ASL? <laughs> uh, uh I'm thirty one. I'm a male as far as I know, and I'm located right now in Villa Park. Nice. So okay. I mm-hmm. remember that from back in the AIM days. <laughs> I, I am a stand up comedian, um, uh, from around the area. I just yeah. started though, I'm like super new. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, so I know Chris because uh he's good friends with my fiance, who we partied I think three times, two times at your uh, uh New Year's. Yeah. And yeah, have a big New Year's party every year. Yeah. It was funny because I told Kelly to ask you about the podcast because she's more friends with you. She's like, No, that's that's weird. I haven't <laughs> talked to him and I'm like It was fine. I'm like, I don't remember what we did on New Year's because I was high as fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> so why? <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's fucked up at those parties. Like, usually. hey, I, I, hey, do I know you? Are you the right Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Have I been in your house, sir? <laughs> so, but but yeah, and then I went on a, a comedy group thing on Facebook, and I'm like, oh well, this guy got nominated for best suburban upcoming comedian. Right. Ooh, like, ooh. I know that guy. What? Yeah. yeah was, Tell us more about that. Uh, they, the comedians out in the burbs, they have uh, a ceremony <laughs> they do for each other every year. They call it like a big jerk off ses- session <laughs> where they just compliment each other. And, uh, I guess this year, um, I got nominated for best up and coming. So, which is really cool. Cause I, my, my year mark is actually next month. So next month in December, I'll be uh, having done stand up for like a year. Okay. And what inspired you to take on this new passion Man, pastime? I, I always lie on podcasts when people ask me, but <laughs> I, I think I'm going to tell the truth on that. Oh, uh, I was going through a divorce. Oh shit. So oh. like, and she couldn't move out for like three weeks. To oh a my month. God. So I was like, I need to get out of the house every night. And I had tried it once before and I was going to kind of stop because I was joining the military. 
Um, but after that, I was like, now I need to get out of the house every night. So I just started doing stand up constantly. That's interesting. That's a good outlet, though. It well, it really was thing. honestly. It was a great way to deal with stuff in the in the short term, and then long term, I just ended up really liking it, so I stuck with it. So, do you have a lot of material then based around like relationships and divorce, or is it far, <laughs> far, far from that? I think initially I had like two jokes about divorce, uh, but then after that, I kind of like thought it was kind of hacky to keep doing it. So I uh, it, re- it reminded me of because uh, we went to Drunken Donut like a week ago, which the, was an uh, uh, is that the Shots and Giggles show yeah, that right, Cameron show. hosts, or and there, and there was a guy the 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 ending, the closing guy, I forgot what his name was, but he's like, yeah. La. Fernandez, I think. Fernandez? Yeah, yeah. Fernandez. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he was, uh, what do you say about like, when you, when you he, he, he said he got like a lease with an uh, ex that he was, uh, I think, trying oh, to marry. Yeah, he had, uh, he was stuck with her for a yeah, while. That's what for he like, said. He's yeah, like, it's like God. living with a nude uncle. You're yeah. just trying to <laughs> avoid them yeah. in every room. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, that w- <laughs> I could relate to that one a lot. That was awesome. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it was a really good show. They 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 put on a really good show, by the way. Shots and giggles. So yeah, I mean, you were there. I, was that the first time you guys were there? Because I ran into you that that night. Yeah, no, I I went there. I think two times before, mm-hmm. because uh, it's it's weird. I well, I did a I tried so um I used to be in a band for ten years. Right. And the some, complex. Yeah. yeah, I remember. And um, somebody we got. I I don't even know if I should mention. You know that old bastard on a radio show. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like you've already yeah, mentioned yeah. him so yeah, many know. times. Let's just drop a bunch of names yeah, yeah. for people. So you know what I'm talking about, yeah. Flabby. Yeah. Well, he 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 booked a show for our band, and I I was just starting out. I'm like, holy fuck, there's somebody wants to book us, and he put this horrible fucking lineup together. It was, you know, uh, like a take my wife please. 70 year old guy dressed up in a smiley face, uh, opening up. <laughs> then us. <laughs> A uh, uh, tree hugging hippie band, and then uh, like a violent, like motivational hardcore band. So motivational. It, so they were motivating you to do violence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fight, uh, yeah. Fuck drugs, just fight instead. Fight, but be cool about it. Be positive. Yeah, like like, like uh, a <laughs> ha- hate breed or something. You know. Oh, hate breed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so uh, so any anyways um so I'm like fuck if this old dude can do stand up the you know the seven year old smiley face guy I'm like fuck it I'll try it out and. I um I actually w- fucking w- weird as hell I did a um, uh blue line laughs. I haven't heard and of that one. Is it where is that? Th- th- it used to be I I th- uh, from what I've heard it used to be happening all the time and it was crowded as fuck but mm-hmm. it's kind of died down cuz the guy who hosts it moved but uh-huh. it was by independent it was in independence tap I think. Uh-huh, okay. And it was like once a month and it was pretty much like an open mic, but it was like usually all comedians, kind of like a place to just uh, riff and yeah, work on shit. It's a lot of mics in it now. Yeah. And I was on it with, uh, it was w- weird, the few times that I did it, I was with John Torres and Cameron, which were like- Oh, John Torres is cool. Yeah. yeah. They, they were like my favorite there. And then weird thing, fucking Rena was there too. Really? Uh, Rena Calm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, like she- like. That, that's when I decided, I'm like, I don't know if I should do this anymore because these are professionals. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, but everyone starts somewhere, man. Exactly yeah. right. I, I'm trying to get you back into it. Do you do stand-up, by the way, Bill? I do, yeah. How long have you been doing it? I performed for the first time in 2014, and then my average was two shows a year. I would do two shows, and then people encouraged me to do it more frequently yeah so now i'm doing a show maybe every other month every two months that's awesome it's I, it's a hobby of mine but i feel like that's a it's a very generous term um, <laughs> like i i know i'm i'm one i'm not very good two i have no marketing strategy so the only time i ever perform is when i'm invited to go on showcases interesting which happens about is that a, mar- a bad marketing strategy or just being pompous that only when I'm invited. Maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are being invited onto these showcases. That's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no. um, I, I, a little of both, I guess. Um, it's just easier. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> like, I don't I don't care enough, I guess, to get out there. So, I don't really do the open mic scene. I don't really network or Because you might end anything. up like, oh, I'm looking for open mics. And then uh, go to some place that's like, you know, some nursing home bingo night yeah. <laughs> well I, you there are some I, weird places <laughs> it's, and, and you know there's no shortage of open mics it's just i don't need to find myself at bars 
any more often than I already am yeah, at bars. Yeah, I feel <laughs> so, you. I feel you. you know, I feel like that that would not be a good addition to my life. So a good marketing strategy would be the the amount of times you go to bars is to just scream in the middle of you there and go, "All right." I'm doing stand up right now. Uh, yeah, you know? everyone, listen to me. <laughs> I'm funny. That could be your thing. Like you just do it spontaneously. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, tickets ahead or anything. Right. <laughs> you ever hear of a, a bar in Chicago called The Land? No. They do this yeah. mic called the soapbox. They don't give you a microphone. You stand on like a soapbox <sighs> platform and then you scream your jokes to people at the bar. Oh, so man. it's exactly what you're describing. I did it one time when I was in the city. Was it as humiliating as it sounds? <laughs> it was like, I, I felt like it was some kind of weird fever dream. Where I'm just, or like I'm having a mental break. It, from the outside, it looks like you're having a mental breakdown. It doesn't look like you're doing stand-up because you're just yelling at people and everyone's staring and you're just, there's no microphone. It doesn't look like you're supposed to be there. Is there a spotlight at all or are you just standing? No. Oh, in the just, dark just, it was not dark but like it's just regular lighting there's no spotlight and yeah. then people are walking past you it was like the weirdest experience oddly enough i did not do well there you <laughs> like well, weird you know that is weird it was super weird that, I, that'd I be funny if they made like the comedians who are very uh monotone do that yeah that's how they have to scream yeah that's how i so. am i have a very deadpan delivery a lot of the time so it's very subtle so if i'm not like I'm, it's weird to scream my jokes it doesn't make any sense for did me. you did you did your voice start cracking near the end uh no maybe i probably started to get like super nervous because like, <laughs> this is like super and it's not that they didn't have a microphone because i saw them have one they had one like behind the bar and i was like just bring that out of here man right come on <laughs> come on it's like a godfather scene it's behind the toilet you gotta Bring yeah. it out on everyone. That was so weird. It was a cool place. I'd probably do it again. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Where Where is the land? Do you recall? Um, no, I don't remember. Honestly, it was a while back. So you you live in Villa Park. Do yeah. you find yourself in the city of Chicago very much, or uh, not often? I've been trying to get out there more and more, just because. But the mics aren't as fun for me, honestly. Why is that? In the burbs? Yeah, in the, out in the, in the city. Oh, yeah. I feel like yeah, there's a yeah. little bit of more of like camaraderie out in the in the burbs. I mean, I'm super new anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like that's probably a lot of what it is when I'm out in the city anyway, but uh, I feel like people kind of hang out more in the burbs even if you don't know each other. Yeah, well. yeah. I was going to say that that's what I was telling Cameron that I feel like you know, specifically about I mean, I haven't been to a lot of places, but like like shots and giggles for example, you go there and it doesn't fucking matter what kind of comedian. You could be no. some like 50s comedian, you could be some like the edgiest fuck and right. people kind of like, so, you know, they try to relate to you and laugh instead of like when I when I went to the city and I did a few stand ups, it felt like people are doing everything they can to not like you or there's like <laughs> it's a competition, you know. Yeah. Plus, there's so many out there. There's so many comics yeah. out there and stuff like that. So everyone's like super mega jaded. You know? Yeah. Whereas out here, it's a little bit weird to see comedians still. Yeah. So which is kind of funny to me because when you think about it. Uh, when people go on tour or anything, you know, the people that you see in burbs and shit who aren't competitive and jaded, yeah. that's what the rest of the U.S. is. It's not like this, you know, really? clicky Chicago. I mean, oh, that, well, you're telling me that like New York and L.A. is in... Well, not, no, no, not New York <laughs> and L.A., but, but, but other parts, you know what I mean? Like, like where? A- everywhere, every other major city that isn't New York, L.A., Chicago, and like Portland. Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, is this guy funny? And that's all that matters rather than... You know, like rather than uh, you know, well, what do they stand for? What do these jokes promote? Type right. shit, sort of like some kind of agenda. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? No. Yeah, some people have like some kind of something they want to say about mm-hmm. stuff like that, and yeah. I feel like uh, I think it's encouraging a lot of circles and stuff like that, just because uh, it's important mm-hmm. to say stuff. But I have no agenda. <laughs> I yeah. got nothing. I tell like spider jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not super deep. <laughs> Well, see, well, yeah, that's what I think we were talking about earlier about being hacky is like, I just like, like, r- especially because of the way environment is, it's it's a little bit better to just be generically goofy rather than like make fun of this type, like a certain thing that may offend people. And I think that, oh, well, if you start being goofy then people are like, well, you're too fucking, you know. Cen- centrist or some or, or, or you know like this is this is hacky to me or something like well, this is, i don't want to hang out with those people anyway yeah yeah <laughs> i like being goofy it's, <clears throat> it's fun plus it, it, uh, every, comedy is kind of like an escape for me i don't want to talk about anything super mega serious yeah i like i want people to laugh you mm-hmm. know and i also want to laugh so i don't like when people get super you know like super into what they think 
uh, America should be like right now. Or yeah, yeah. Like that. I, I would say that for a different kind of platform. Although I appreciate when people do. And I, I'm just in general, I don't know anything about politics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> S- same here. I I hate it when people ask me shit about. Like first, first off, people say, "Oh man, Trump jokes are so hacky." Yeah, because it's an easy fucking target. It is. Se- second of all, it's like, I uh, I don't like. I don't know anything about politics, and I think he's hilarious because I don't know anything. Because he just reminds me of like a wrestling guy, you know. Well, he when, was he wasn't wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, as, uh, like, like, and and I didn't see that until like a year ago. But he, but <laughs> even before that, it just he just seemed like Vince McMahon to me. You know, it's like right. It's like when when he, when he says, "Oh, we're gonna get a, it's gonna be a cage match, no holds barred. Oh, we're bringing down the wall, all right, you know." <laughs> yeah. And then like we're gonna have folding chairs. Oh, you you want ice? All right, it's two words for you. Suck it, you know. Uh, yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's wrestling to me. Yeah, it, it's he. I mean, he's from a reality TV show, and that's what we're getting. So yeah. That's about as much as I understand what's happening. Mm-hmm. You know. What are you? Gonna what do? um? I think we, uh, definitely since you're a stand-up comic and. Going like, do do you have any like uh, influences or uh, anybody you look up to? Uh, I like top three or something. Mitch Hedberg, uh, he's like probably the oldest comedian I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, but then right now I'm really into John Mulaney. He's been re- really super funny, and yeah. uh, Tom Segura, he tells really good stories. I really Dude, like him. he's my number one favorite. Really, oh number one God. favorite. Tom we're we're, uh, we're gonna go see him in uh, April. Me, oh, really? me, Bill, and yeah, mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah, he's uh, his last couple of specials were amazing. I'm kind of hoping he'll do another one soon, but we'll see. Yeah, I couldn't be- I couldn't believe it because like they had all these uh, out of nowhere, out of all these stand ups on Netflix, and one yeah. day I'm just like clicking through, and I'm like, oh, who's this fat guy, average looking guy <laughs> with a beard? He, does. he, he, he didn't even <laughs> dress up for his special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he just wearing like jeans and a, a t shirt. Yeah. He looks like a jaded like mechanic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> which is which is weird. John Mulaney, he wears like suits. Yeah. But then I saw him on a show like from like 2014, and he was wearing t-shirts and jeans too. And like that's so weird to see him not in a suit. Mm. It was very very strange. So I mean, I guess everyone kind of I don't know if he found his style later on. I always think about like what I'm supposed to wear on stage. You know? Yeah. Uh, what am I What am I trying to communicate? I have this, I have this conversation with my buddy all the time. When I first started, I was doing what I thought that comedians wore. I wore a blazer all the time because mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that's what. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uniform. <laughs> I've heard that <laughs> I've heard that shit. How there's like 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 time periods where like what what is it like the '90s? Everybody had the huge uh, shoulder pads in, yeah. the, in their blazers. Yeah. So for the first like two months, I was wearing a blazer for sure. Uh, <laughs> but blazers are timeless. You can't go wrong with a blazer. I still like them, but now I'm like, oh, if they see me in that, they're gonna kill me. You gotta update it. It's gotta be like a you know like like a, a tie dye blazer right, or, yeah. or like you know fuck you everywhere like <laughs> Conor McGregor. You know? Yeah, you got a custom blazer of some kind. I want to have a, a stand up party where I make everyone wear a blazer. Ooh, that'd be fun. I think it'd be ridiculous. Besides you, besides no, I'll <laughs> wear one. <laughs> fuck you guys. One. <laughs> you guys are well also wear. hacky. But if you don't bring it, you have you'll get one supplied to you and it's not gonna fit <laughs> oh. how a many blazer blazers drive you know? yeah. how many blazers do you have I, I only have one but I'll oh. go to the thrift store for the, this party <laughs> that's commitment yeah. um, so have you been outside of Illinois or within Illinois like where's your favorite place to perform uh, perform wise no not not outside of Illinois um, but most of the mics like there's like a there's like three mics I hit up all the time. Okay. That's uh, Mojo's in Plainfield. That's on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Thursday is Josephine's, um, which is my the first mic I ever did. And then uh, there's Sunday at Oasis, which is in West Chicago. And then uh, there's a couple mics on Wednesday, including uh, one that I just started with my buddy uh, TJ at Lunar Brewing. Uh, that's in Villa Park. So we uh, we started doing that one, and it'll be... Um, the second one will be this coming Wednesday. So nice. How's it going? How was the first one? The first one was awesome. Everyone came out and showed a lot of support, and it was a uh, it was a really good room. It, nice. And uh, hopefully the second one will be <laughs> still yeah. good. And it, the first one's always good. That's why this yeah. is my understanding. So I'm hoping that it'll just kind of stay at least somewhere. Like sure. That. That's really cool. And the brewery obviously is receptive to it. Was the yeah. were the clients there like the customers? Did they get into it or was it like what the fuck is going on at my brewery? They did. They did. Um it was just surprising cuz I don't think they usually do they don't think they ever really do comedy there. Mm. Um, it's mostly kind of like bands every once in a while. So um but 
every all the all the the customers and stuff like that. We talked to them a little bit before we started, and everyone seems super pumped about it. And uh, everyone's been super nice so far outside the comedians, so it's been awesome. Nice. And you're hosting it? Yeah, we uh, we hosted together. Uh, me and my buddy uh, T.J. Remick, and uh, we do kind of like we both get up on stage at the same time. Kinda okay. Because we're dorks. No. I work. Uh, I work. I'll, I'll work music. I'll, I have my little synth. Okay. But I do music for in between comics and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's what, like, like a Korg? Yeah, it's uh it's a novation circuit. Ooh. It's a novation circuit. Um so what that sort sounds of like a cult. <laughs> 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 I, I, I would follow that cult. That thing's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a portable synth that you can like write on the fly and stuff like that. It's battery powered. Nice. And then it sounds oh. it sounds super cool. You know. Well, I also do music cuz I Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm a musician. I keep forgetting that I'm a musician. <laughs> Stand up musician. Uh, yeah. Are you the best up and coming musician in the summer? No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> it was like totally such a, a culture shock for everyone to be super nice to me when I first joined, and everyone said it's like uh, you, they thought I've been doing stand up for a really long time, mm-hmm. or at least a, a year or two. Uh, which was surprising because, like, when I first started playing guitar, no one says that shit. You're, you're like, no. No, when you first start playing guitar, no one's like, oh, wow, you've been right. playing for a couple of years. They're like, please stop. Well, yeah. <laughs> with the guitar, it doesn't matter, like, how confident you are, like, how right. good you feel. Like, you can't really fake it. Right, no, like, you can't fake it. Hot yeah. cross buns. Yeah. To be fair, I have a bunch of public speaking experience from being uh, a musician. Okay. So that was that was helpful in the, like, transition to doing stand-up. Yeah, I, when, when I was in the band, it was so much easier to be on stage. Because right. when I do stand up, I'm just so fucking shaky and like. Yeah, I don't blame you. I was like, I was like that the first time too. Plus, it's weird not to have a guitar in your hand. Yeah, you know yeah. And the whole room is silent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole and there's no one with you on stage. And there's everyone's just, looking you know, at you. And, yeah, they're looking at you. I look at like some old videos because I was you know like in a psychedelic tree hugging hippie band and like, I just realized how like we're playing the chillest wall of sound song but i'm like spastic as fuck yeah <laughs> to, to this, you know <laughs> which would make it look even funnier because i would like bitch at my band members like why the fuck don't you get into it why don't you get and, and so it would like look like i'm on some serious drugs you know right <laughs> this guy definitely is the guy with the problems you know? right. <laughs> oh man like every musician problems yeah um so next question uh what are your f- top Three favorite Three Six Mafia songs. Ooh, three, good one. I don't think I know that. It was Slab on My Knob. Is that one? Is that a Three Six yeah, Mafia? Yeah, it sure song? is. Then that one three times because that's okay. the only one I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Slab on My Knob and two I'm different looking. remixes. Yeah, and two different remixes of it. Uh, I actually do really like that song. No <laughs> surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think any dirty song is ridiculous. Yeah. Fun fact that's actually a uh, Beatles cover. <laughs> yeah, the Beatles wrote the original. <laughs> Slab on this my is like knob. a weird Johnny Cash scenario. I always he like sings a song I think is his, and it's like a Nine Inch Nails song. I'm like what the? Yeah, fuck? <laughs> I thought you wrote that, right? Yeah, uh, super bizarre. That's have funny. Have you ever thought about combining your passions like music and comedy? Like, I just started to recently. Okay, I'm trying to do it in a way that I'm not ripping off like Bo Burnham. Okay, he, he did it, and then uh, Dimitri Martin does a lot of guitar stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to pull away from doing that because I don't want it, I don't want anyone to think I'm like stealing their thing. Uh, I'm... All I got right now is an impression of uh, Beethoven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it, just okay. <laughs> it's it's just it's stupid. Uh, it's basically just me playing a Beethoven song and then talking about sluts. It's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> because in my head. Like back in the day, like classical, like a pianist, those were like the rock stars of their time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, in my head, they were just doing it to get laid. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like any other musician, right. or Whatever. So I, that's. So what does Beethoven? Do? What did you say? You want to fuck? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to come home? You and me? No. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stupid shit like that. That's my impression of Beethoven. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. He wouldn't hear it because he's like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Are you down? That's what? Right. The syphilis totally took away his uh, his. Oh, is that it? Yeah, it was syphilis. Yeah, so, so he was. I mean, it's. I'm pretty. I think I'm on the. <laughs> I'm right on the money with this one. Yeah, he got syphilis, and then uh, I think it's what caused his hearing loss because he wasn't born deaf. Oh, he got syphilis. That I believe, and then they did not tell us that in music class in elementary school. Yeah, That's they, interesting. They tend to opt uh, out of the cool parts of actually. Sure. <laughs> <you know? laughs> dude, he was just crushing poon back in the day. Yeah. Oh, I do powdered that powdered wig of his. He like, was crushing. Poon. They never. Well, did you that. did you ever hear about why they have uh, powdered wigs? So 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 two old school facts because you mentioned the soapbox thing too. I heard they have powdered wig because that was killing away lice. So people would shave their heads and then they put the powder to like because there was like a medicine in there to get to well, like ward away bugs. 
Huh. And then the other and then the other thing about soapbox, what I thought was fucking crazy that I I was like so yes, I have another excuse about when people get nervous doing stand up, why they get all shaky. And I heard that that's a kind of like nature versus nurture genetically passed on thing from back in medieval days when they would uh burn you at the stake and put you up like at your last time to sort of like no i'm not a witch i'm not satanic <laughs> i have not been doing the and and the whole town is watching you kind of like a uh, holy grail you know mm. that's weird. so i, 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 I don't you, know you said it with the microphone in front of you so it looked like you <laughs> yeah, yeah i am not a witch <laughs> yeah guys so dating's weird and <laughs> <Not> right <laughs> I'm about to get into a set <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have born parents yeah <laughs> that'll be my thing i'm not a witch there you so yeah what is the you know what's with these <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's that's the jokes write themselves, right? Like, Man. Yeah. yeah, no one's doing witch jokes, so you should jump on that. Yeah, right. Un unblazed trails yeah. for you. Market for you know what's sure. you know what's really weird. I'm not gonna mention his name, <laughs> but now I worked with a stand-up guy who moved here from fucking Hicktown, Nebraska. Sure. And he another one of those cities where the comedy scene is much much nicer. Oh yeah, more friendly. Yeah, Hicktown. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Hicktown. <laughs> that's yep. <laughs> so, so he, no. The funny thing was that he was. T- uh, you know how you're talking about like what you should wear and like you, you got to figure out like kind of your character and your swag or whatever. He was telling me that I look scary, so that I should have jokes about me being a pussy because people are intimidated by me. And then the funny thing was, I would tell him ideas for jokes, and he said, "No, no, that's shit. That's shit." And then he'd take my jokes, and then later on, I'm like, "Wait a minute, aren't you doing the same thing?" Except you're being a pussy because you are one, you know. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was That's weird. So he came from Nebraska. Yeah, the comedy capital of the world. Yeah. You know, I, I dated a girl recently who lived in Nebraska, and she wanted me to move out there. And I'm like, oh man, I don't. I just I want to do stand up. She's like, you could do stand up out here. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. I think Cowbell. people move out of Nebraska towards Chicago to do stand up. Right. Yeah. Not the other way around. Oh man, that would have been so bad. I did a uh, improv class. At I.O. Theater. In Nebraska? No, in Chicago. I'm saying because everybody moves out. Do you know that it is? I.O. Theater? I.O. Theater, no. It's like, so, okay, so I guess the way that people explain it is Second City is like book education on comedy. Yeah. So people, it, it like, it really doesn't have a good name for itself lately because it's like, you're sitting in a class, like, okay, here's the equation, and then you do your thing. Interesting. And I.O. Theater, you immediately get thrown on stage and you do improv. It was terrifying. And I I, I loved it. It was like fucking therapy. So you for are me. you're a fan of improv then? I mean I don't think I would want to do it prefer, like I would re- I like stand up better. So I'd like to get better than and mm-hmm. and it's a challenge and I like Wait, to do you enjoy like watching stand up more? Like you prefer both. Or okay. I prefer stand up both watching and doing do okay. because it's a challenge and I like to learn new things and get better at them. Sure. And I was, like, like like improv to me was like it kind of reminded me of like when I would just get high and fuck around with buddies. Sure, you know, like you just kind of just I don't know, <laughs> you know, like everybody's the the thing that I learned with improv because you you know they're they're um there's that herald thing you, mm-hmm. you know what that is yeah where it's sort of like everybody come jumps in at one moment and you just play one character and the thing was it was like too easy sort of like you just play one character in a scene like like they give you a scene they're like okay uh this takes place in a bathroom and this couple is having an argument all right and each person has to go in line and do their thing and i would like come in and be like ah why isn't the handicap room open i just shat myself you know and you just keep coming in and it's i don't know it's naturally like there's no you don't have you don't have to really put an effort for it to be funny oh i disagree (laughs) well then i don't know i've seen a lot of improv yeah, uh, <laughs> and because of that, I've seen a lot of bad improv. Yeah, yeah. Improv uh, seems really, really hard to me. That seems way harder than stand up to me. In my, I don't. People argue with me all the time about that, but I can do stand up. I can do it. I think it's fun. Um, but improv, I am not funny on the spot. I need. I'm I sure. Need, I need like preparation, polish, yeah. rehearse. I, I think need that some kind might of idea ahead of time. I think that might be why I'm bad at stand up because I've had like like you've told me that I'm better on the spot. Just be myself rather sure. than putting jokes together. So maybe it's just like me. Maybe. I think you're maybe in your head too much. Maybe you overthink things. But I, yes, um, definitely. So I, I don't know. There is nothing better on this earth than good improv. Conversely, better than there stand-up? Is, 
Um, yeah, I would I would say that good like quality improv I find like way funnier than um, stand up because it uh, there's more like variety I guess like the the scenarios change and the characters change and they yeah, rather than they one develop character. and I think I like that it's a team effort and yeah. so like a good team can do wonders but there is nothing more cringeworthy than bad <laughs> bad improv and I used to go out with um, a pretty prolific improviser here in Chicago and so I went from seeing absolutely no improv to seeing three improv shows a week and it's a lot of improv it Jeez. was a lot of improv yeah. and a lot of it wasn't great but the the teams that were great just out of like they cracked me up it was yeah so good so i know one rule about like when people get into improv is yes like and that uh um yes and what that yeah. that's a rule you can't, can't if you're working it. with a team you can't shut down anyone's idea you have to agree with it and add to it yeah yeah but also that um yes and i i'm lost that's what you just <laughs> you said yeah also I'm and lost and yes oh okay. <laughs> yes yes and yes is, and, okay is a different way of saying yeah also i'm sorry i'm grammatically incorrect no 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 you're it, we're we're saying the same thing just in, in different ways head. <laughs> okay right. too much no continue no but any, no, um, yes, and <laughs> uh, I, I, I've heard that. Um, well, I remember one of the biggest problems was, was that when people g- would go into it, they were trying too hard to be funny. When people just, I, I mean, what I would do, and it worked for me every single time, like the teacher would go up to me and be like, you need to take the next class, is that you just, I would think of the most weird fucking character I saw that day. I don't know, like some guy pissing himself on the train with barf in his dreads <gasps> or something, you know? Oh, and then, and then you improvised as me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to be that, I, I don't want to mention his name. No, no but, uh, you know, and I would just play that character seriously rather than try and, like, most people will try and, like, sneak in some mm. one-liners right. or, or yeah, do something exactly ridiculous. Right. When it's, if you seriously play that character, it doesn't even have to be, it, it could be the most, whatever, normalized I don't know, fucking like Mormon type <laughs> salesman or something, you know. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So you took stand-up classes at I.O.? or No, just imp- it's. I think it's only improv there. Okay. I think what discouraged me from going there is... is uh, I gave up too quick because I, <laughs> I, 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 looked at the we- I looked at the website and I'm like, there's 80 teachers and there's about 20 students per teacher. That's how many people are trying to get good at this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's I don't know. Small fish, big you, pond. Did you like yeah. it? You liked it though. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fun. Um, you know, we there was a lot of different. Uh, what I liked is that naturally, everybody in the class was a different fucking person from a different background, and that's cool. A, a, a di- really different ends of the spectrum. Like yeah. w- w- the first day, you're like. I'm not going to get along with any of these fucking people. And I <laughs> and I know it's in everybody's head. <laughs> is that what yeah, you think? You yeah. walk into a room like, I fucking right. hate everyone <laughs> but here. It, but everyone automatically has a common ground, which I yeah. think is awesome. That's what I thought was cool about stand-up is like, there's a lot of comics with different kind of points of view and stuff like that. And a lot of them don't look like people I would normally hang out with. Yeah. I hang out with, and it's, it's so, uh, my circle of friends is like super eclectic now. It's like super weird. Uh, we were after a party one time. It was all comedians. We were walking to the gas station, and we looked like the weirdest gang <laughs> of people. Like yeah. no one's clothes are matching at all. It was just like, like we all met on a bus. That's what it looked <laughs> like. <laughs> clothes not matching. Right. I thought this is like the Warriors, <laughs> man. Wait. Yeah, was it yeah. like none of our styles are anywhere near the same Wait. as each other's? So just, they forgot their blazers at home. Right. Yeah. No. no it, <laughs> it was too hot outside their yeah. blazers. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the weirdest group of people you could see, but we all just, I don't know. I, I dig that about it. Yeah. I'll tell you the thing I enjoy more than performing stand-up is watching stand-up. Mm-hmm. Like I have way more fun like just sitting Are and you just, bruising. Are you just yeah. live? Yeah. Because like, I, I love hanging out with comedians and I love right. uh, how like the, the conversations uh, are just a bit more... Um, I guess accelerated like wits are a little sharper than you, you know your everyday Joe whoever 
Um, and I don't know if that's true. Maybe that's just the impression I get. No, but I, I see. I feel that um, too. Yeah. But, you know, I could be doing that and then at some point a guy with a microphone says my name and it's like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a weird dream. That's weird. <laughs> I love shows, but I'm like the exact opposite. Like when I watch a show, it makes me want to do stand up way more hmm, like yeah. i'm always like jealous that they got to go up and then i didn't sure I didn't yeah get to do anything because they look like they're having so much fun everyone's having a good time i just want to be part of it beyond just a spectator sure yeah but uh, i get I, that same f- do you get that with music too music music not so much because i feel like uh i don't know with uh, with my jokes i lie a lot I, like <laughs> a lot of people like to tell truths i tell like mostly lies like almost like 90 percent lies what do you lie about i lie about being a virgin that's one of my favorite. Okay. <laughs> I like to tell people I'm a 30 year old virgin. Sure. Um, uh, so well, 31 year old. 31 year old. So you're lying about that too? Well, yeah, then I lie about my age. <laughs> um, just stupid shit like that. Sure. But, uh, so I you also, identify as a 90 year old? <laughs> I also tell people that I, I, I stopped doing drugs. And, and then I'll tell them later on, like, I do a bunch of drugs. It's just like, it's always like back and forth. I'm always constantly lying. <laughs> but some people are like, tell like lots of truths. And I, I don't know. Uh, music is like, it's super honest. And uh, that kind of like is a little bit scarier. It's like poetry almost. Yeah. Like, so, like reading some poetry, especially since I like write a lot of lyrics and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, uh, these are all sad because I'm sad. There's no oh, hiding there. <laughs> sure. Know, there's nowhere to hide. Well, you could like, have you heard of Slim Jesus? No. What's he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's a, he's a 14 year old rapper who all his videos have like laser point Uzis and that he shoots up people, but he's really just like getting punished by his ma. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never I'm not even that. kidding. I just like the name Slim Jesus. That sounds it's awesome. pretty good. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna have to Google that later. Yeah. I always got it mixed up because I know there was an ICP song where they call Eminem Slim Anus. So you could see Jesus and anus. Getting yeah, you know. no, there was there was definite beef between <laughs> ICP and, and Eminem, and who could forget? Um, so Slim Jesus, uh, actually one of our week's sponsors uh, for this episode, so thank you for all your <laughs> yeah, yeah. support. Uh, if his mom allows it. You know, right. You know, don't yeah. be, you know. <laughs> do you guys always mention a, uh like a faux sponsor yeah yeah we lie here <laughs> a lot too <laughs> okay good we'll yeah. go along you did that last time i was like are they serious like, i forgot who you said the sponsor was last time it was something ridiculous it it always a lot of times it's just depending on what i'm drinking right and, and <laughs> yeah. they're a sponsor right. and or a product will come up in discussion and right and then uh, yeah we'll that's the pointed out as as a sponsor of the show but but varg is actually a sponsor he's just paying us in twigs that's because right. he's living the nordic <laughs> life you know that's right he on his commune yeah whatever i don't know. we're making friends we're out there we're networking it's called awesome. it's called Thulo- thulenian philosophy is it okay, yeah it's <laughs> where you stick to your nationality not 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 racist at all you just, right. you just don't want any other ones to exist you know? sure it's yeah. like looking at a map of the world and thinking like i'm not gonna like any of this it's like no it's like looking at a map of your country right and you mm-hmm. put water you drip water around it and then you light the rest of the map on fire you know mm. oh, i love all of this wait what's happening oh it's getting better you know <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful what other questions do you have uh, on that the, the list of yours? The last question I had was um, going off uh, this list. Have you ever been in a situation where you could save someone's life, comma, and why the hell did you? <laughs> <laughs> save someone's life. Yeah. Uh, or has your life ever been saved? My life ever been saved. By the Lord. Um, Slim Jesus yeah, himself. Man, probably. I feel like I die. I almost die all the time. I like can't see it at night. Sure. So uh, when I'm driving, I'm like constantly dying. So if anyone's in the car telling me that a car's coming, they're saving my life, or to get out of that lane because we're going the wrong direction, <laughs> that's always good. I always appreciate that. Uh, I usually tell by their screaming. <laughs> so uh, beyond after that, you uh, run them over. Yeah. No, I don't really. Uh, I've. O- it's always been my dream to save someone's life, though, because I was a huge comic book fan. But I have yet to actually get to do that. So if you guys are in danger, I'm like nearby. And I have nothing going on. Please let me. <laughs> I'll call you <laughs> so I can check that off my bucket list. Yeah. But what if you have to drive there? If it's kind of like drive. a conflict of interest. <laughs> well, then I'm a superhero. Bill, because <laughs> Bill, <laughs> it's, he, if it's dark, Chris wants to save someone's life. So you don't call the person who will actually save your life. You want you want to help out Chris yeah. by having you know yeah, right. by being don't here. Call, there might be someone near you. Yeah. but throw me a bone. Don't call nine one one. Don't call a medic. Call Chris. <laughs> yeah, call me first. Call Chris. So I can see. No, why? Have you guys saved someone's life? That's a weird question. <laughs> no, I. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> is kind of. A weird I, way for you guys to segue yeah, to yeah. how you guys are heroes. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> I yeah no, I I, I I was just coming off shit. Um, oh no, Chris! You've off, never off. saved a life, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I forgot that I saved someone's life. I think that's how I came up with this <laughs> question. You've saved so many people. Sure, right. <laughs> when I forget, yeah, yeah, when you're as important. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Because um, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was just coming up with random questions, and then Kelly reminded me that I saved someone's life about three years ago. We went swimming in Lake Michigan, like in Michigan. We we were like on the tip where like Michigan and Indiana meet, and I guess some old guy was flapping around like a fish uh, uh, on like really far out. We, we, everybody tries to reach the sandbar at this one specific area. Yeah. And I guess he was having a heart attack and I swam oh, him in. Yeah. And I kind of like didn't think anything of it uh, to the point where I forgot. Yeah. So, so but, <sighs> but I don't know. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. I was like, guys, leave me alone. Unless he's like well, a Nazi and then. No. Right. Yeah. Good Wait job. a minute. <laughs> what are your political views? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back in you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to yeah. ask them. <laughs> uh, well, then there was a second part of that question. And why did you, Phil? And why did I? Uh, Were you on your way to the sandbar anyway? <laughs> well, I was, yeah, on, my was way, your way. on my way <laughs> to. I was on my way to shore because it was getting dark. I like to swim when it's dark because it's scary. Yeah, sure. Because of the danger, right? Because <laughs> the abyss swallows you. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no I, I had this argument at the office that I worked with because the that that uh, huge, you know, race war gun nut scumbag that I worked with. Mm-hmm. He would tell me that that's one thing he's afraid of is that getting swallowed by the sea, and I'm like. <laughs> What? <laughs> We're not gonna get along here. Was his I dad love like it. a sea captain. He's right. having like <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. I never came back. Yeah. yeah, he went whaling and just, <laughs> whaling. just never came. You know home. what's you know what's funny? I got him really mad because he would keep telling me that he isn't racist and I um I uh I was going to a therapist at the time and I would watch a shitload of like Nazi documentary there's not not a shitload. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was I, I was watching this doc Hang on. No, I was watching <laughs> I was I was watching. It was around that Charlottesville time, so they had a shitload of like KKK documentaries on, on okay. uh, Netflix, and you were just absorbing them. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I re- <laughs> and, and what I realized, and even like, no, I had friends like in the Chicago punk scene who ended up joining like actual skinhead fucking prison gangs. Oh, jeez. And what I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, all these motherfuckers have daddy issues. Every single one of them. Like they all like because they're trying to prove dead and they either died or end up in jail. So like I'm gonna prove it by killing blacks or something, you know. Yeah. And I mentioned this to him, and he's like closet racist. So he's like, "Well, I mean, my my dad died a few years ago." I'm like, "Oh, yeah. explains everything, motherfucker." Mm-hmm. You know. Like, so that's I don't always know. a good indicator of when you're not a racist when you constantly have to tell people that you're not a racist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. how you know you're not racist. Just because I'm from Hicktown, Nebraska, doesn't mean I'm racist. Right. <laughs> I I just go along with it. I mean, fuck, like that, that's how you end the conversation. You're a fucking Nazi. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure am. And proud of alone? it. You're gonna leave me alone? Yeah. I'm undercover. You know, I'm not wearing. You know, I don't have my broom in my ass and marching. You know, <laughs> your tiki torch. Yeah. So I don't know. I I, I think that's the end of the interview. I I don't know. Should we go on a a topic? I think. Um, I think let's wind down for a minute. Let's take let's a break. Down. We'll come back, and we You're can. You're a fucking Nazi. Yeah. I. That's right. I am, and proud of it. No, just kidding. I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll say this, <laughs> friends. We'll be right back. Don't do that. <laughs> 